Right, ladies and gentlemen, time for a bit more uh, product chat uh, and some more product news for you. And I'm pleased to say I'm joined by this man again, Mr. Uh, James Hudson from uh, JF Hudson, who has got uh, yet another product for you. So the last time we were out with James, we were having a look at the compact front boxes, cracking little uh, innovation there. So today, this is the Silo Crab. Yeah, this is the so, Silo Crab. So go for it, in a nutshell, what's a Silo Crab? So basically, it's a bucket with doors on the front that is used for collecting up the leftovers of what the cows haven't eaten in front of the feed fence. Yeah. So we're here at Metcalf Farms at Washfold, and before they put fresh feed out, they uh, collect up what's left. Yeah. Uh, because that then means they can weigh it, so they know how much the cows have eaten, uh, and it also means they can work out how much it's cost to feed them on a daily basis. Right. Uh, and it also that information also feeds back into uh, nutritionists. So if there's too much being left, they can alter the diet. To, they can kind of yeah, work out what's going just, on. It's managing what, what the cows are eating. Yeah. Um, previously to the silo crab, it was a massive bucket and basically drive down the feed. It, the bucket was nine foot wide, same width as the monitor. Yeah. Drive down the feed passage, get to the end and manually shovel the left, what you, well, what you couldn't gonna, get to pick up in. I was going to say, bucket. because like for a lot of people, they'll just be able to push straight out of the end of the passage and maybe yeah. up against the wall, but they're not able to do that. No. It just explains so, some of the, you know, the, the building, challenges they've got. Yeah, because the buildings laid out there, the, the, the cows go in, uh, to the parlour and return to the parlour through the middle of all the buildings. So it's effectively six feed passages that go up to a a dead end where yeah. there isn't anything to push against. So up to a gate yeah. that you can't push and it, against. And it, it's all to do with the group sizes and it really works. But obviously that then means that when it comes to this job, it's a bit of a challenge. Yeah. Uh, and previously it was push as far as you could, get as much as you could in, and then the last bit you had to shovel in manually. Well this was basically, this saved that manual bit of work. Right. So this, this was literally born out of this specific challenge yeah. at Metcar Farms. Yeah. But yeah. you can also imagine it, you know, yeah, this at was, a lot of other places. This was Philip ringing up and saying, look, I've had an idea, come and talk to us and see if you can help. We delivered the first one last March, which was uh, basically uh, two doors bolted to Philip's bucket. And uh, so that one's been here, what are we at now, 15, 16 months now? Uh, and it's it's done a lot of work. Yeah. Uh, I worked it out and well I measured it, and there's 965 meters of feed fence to collect from and so like every day. Thick end of a kilometer. Yeah. Across the ground yeah, every day. Every day. So that must throw up a few more challenges, like wear rates of you know these rubbers and whatnot and yeah. whatever else on there. Well, that, in fairness, that was why I measured it. Yeah. Because we wanted to make sure that they they were lasting as long as they should be really. It saved on a daily basis 45 minutes a day. Right. Which, when you calculate that over a year of man time, machine time, and everything in together, it adds up to a lot of money. Right. And so the one that is here, I calculated based on that and based on an hourly rate and a machine rate, it paid for itself in 173 days. All right. So this one we've built as a complete bucket. This is you start from lot. ground yeah. up with this one as opposed yeah, because to an adapting in bucket. In fairness, adapting a bucket's all very well, but you over end up adding more weight where you don't need it. And in fairness, it, buckets aren't designed to have hydraulic doors strapped to the side no. of them. So this is designed specifically for that job. Uh, so we've managed to save weight where we can, but make it strong where it needs to be as well. Right. Routing of the hydraulic pipes is better on this one yeah. because we can because we it. can do well it. i see around just around these corners there just yeah. around the back you've gone sort of through the bucket almost well yeah i mean that's adding strength but also it's stopping the pipes yeah you get a bigger feeding. radius on them yeah yeah so um yeah and i mean it's quite obviously there's a lot of weight on the front of this bucket because of the doors yeah so obviously engineering that into it as well that the, the sides are, are engineered to take the the weight of them but also they, they get put under a lot of stress uh, well, that's it, because you're literally pushing into stuff, aren't well, you? Yeah, so there must be stresses on them doors. Well, you get, them, you get them sort of that way. You get them through the doors. Coming back at yeah. you. If you run into something, it's a fair smack going all the way yeah. through. So you, you're trying to work out how to best dissipate any impact forces throughout the bucket yeah. so something doesn't break. But then also, you've got quite a lot, because you, when you've got the doors open, you've got quite a lot of upward force as well. Right. Uh, that's putting a lot of stress on the side. So engineering it to um, to take 
take that as well. Yeah. But it's just, it's got to do the job. It's yeah. got to do the job day in, day out. So the, the original, the first one, the bucket was nine foot wide. Yeah. So when it's closed, it's 11 foot wide. Yeah. When it's open, it's 15 foot wide. So it's the it's first, massive. fair tool is the yeah. first prototype. So that's, and, and some of that reason was because that bucket had to be as wide as the Manitou because yeah. that's the bucket was being used for the job. Yeah. Whereas this one, this is seven foot wide. So we could afford to lose width because yeah. the doors would gain you it don't back need anyway. It. Yeah. Yeah. So basically we've built this one and effectively we could go small quite easily. Yeah. So, you know, as we've said a couple of times already, it was born out of quite a bit of a niche issue, this yeah. this uh, this machine, this bucket. Um, do you think there's other applications for it? Maybe other industries or, I yeah. don't know, other areas? There is potentially a, a, within the poultry industry for cleaning out poultry sheds. Yeah. It's not something we've tried. This is basically, we built this one as a demo machine to, to basically show farmers what it does and see if it suits their system. Um, I don't like, I don't want to sell somebody something that isn't for them. Yeah. That's not what I do. I'd rather they tried it and were convinced themselves that it was for them. Yeah. And there's potentially other industries. Um, like our heart and soul is in agriculture, but we aren't that sort of myopic that we don't look outside. Mm. And that, in fairness, that's sometimes where you get ideas from is other industries. That's it. Looking yeah. at what they're doing and, right. and seeing. Could use that over here yeah. or this over there or. Yeah, definitely. So are these effectively available yet or? Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, so you can, yeah. if you wanted to rig up an order one, you could do if, yes. you're, if you yeah. wanted to now. These are on the website. They're not available to order off the website, obviously, because they're quite bespoke and there's mm. quite a lot of money in them. And really, I wouldn't want someone to buy one off the website yeah. <laughs> without talking to them yeah. first. Give you a bell first. Yeah. There you go. Give me a ring. Yeah. <laughs> well, I suppose just one other engineering sort of question is obviously you you arrived at the conclusion that doors are the ideal thing. Did you look at any other sort of ways of doing it? Did over the top or pulling um, it back or? No, in fairness, I spent a lot of time looking at it. I spent mm. a lot of time trying to work out how to make the doors fold right back on themselves. Yeah. So effectively doing like 230 degrees. Yeah. It's a bit of a fine line between over complicating things and just getting the job done. Yeah. And so after a lot of sort of trial and error, it's better like this because then you've got a dead stop on the end of the ramp. Yeah. So that when you, if you do hit something, which inevitably you will, all that force of the door hit, end hitting something is dissipated through everything yeah not just the hydraulic pipe not just going yeah like so yeah it's uh it'll take a bit of pain <laughs> well on that note thanks once again for showing us yet another product from uh, jay fulton and yourselves uh absolute cracker uh can't wait for the next one thank you very much no worries catch you again in a bit eh yep